Hey, this is Natsu, and today we're taking a look at an aircraft carrier in 8.5. Now, this doesn't include 8.5.1, a recent little hotfix that allowed you to disable the ship names on your minimap. It's no longer tied to alternative battle interface, but it also introduced a slight buff to survivability expert skill. I think it's a 10 hit point buff per aircraft per tier, almost unrecognizable in the impact. I mean, it just is such a subtle change. Honestly, it feels like a change just to make a change, you know, because there was a promise that they would indeed introduce something that would increase the hit points of the aircraft carrier. And I, I guess the survivability expert change is what they wanted to do. But the bigger topic, how do you play an aircraft carrier well in 8.5 against a good team? Now, this is a very important topic because Clan Brawl was announced to include aircraft carriers. This is the clan brawl that is tier 8 and tier 10. I believe July 6th is the tier 8, and I think tier 10 is like the 16th or somewhere in that range. But they're introducing aircraft carriers to the clan brawl system. And prior to this AA system adjustment, they weren't even on the table. So, you know, whether you like them or not, clan brawl will include them. And I just wanted to walk through exactly how I am effective and what I'm looking to do in the game if I can. So, obviously, we're just flying around. We're just spotting the enemy. We're getting a good idea of what's going on. I don't really have a good target to attack. Every target I would attack, I would basically lose everything. So I'm trying to delay the game. The only enemy DD is nowhere to be found near any objective. There is someone smoking out for the Yoshino, which, by the way, crazy Yoshino. You do not play Yoshino at the front line. The Yoshino goes to the back line, behind the battleships. But, you know, regardless of what this player's strategy is, I'm going to try and help my team maintain good spotting. That's one of the few things you can still do without incurring any losses. Now, what's an easy thing to spot? enemy battleships. And another thing that's very easy to spot is ships that are openly firing. Whenever you fire your guns, your AA detection blooms out immensely. There's an enemy Des Moines and another enemy that has sort of positioned themselves behind the island, and I wanted to try and reveal their location so that my team, who's firing from range, can engage them. It's easy to keep battleships spotted. Their detection is terrible, it's much harder and much more nuanced to get in a good position to keep targets who are camping an island. We're not even close enough for the Des Moines bloom, the AA bloom, to take hold. Finally, after I'm able to round the Iowa and the Gorosakua first, I can actually get in range to spot the Des Moines. And note what I do. I drop the fighter perfectly outside of his AA aura. He has to reposition and sail either away or towards the fighter to take it out of the spotting position. It just so happens that the spotting position also seemingly helps with the Haku, but the Hakuru is way too far away, yeah, way too far away. But this is a perfect position to deny those cruiser camping island positions that are so prevalent. And uh, did I say Gorosakua first? It's in North Carolina. Uh, yeah, you got to get your eyes checked, Natsu. But in this position, I can keep these guys spotted. I can have my teammates assist. We've already racked up 31,000 damage done. There is a Yue Yang that is isolated. And at this precise moment, I could have punished him by sailing, well, sailing, by flying all the way around this and going towards that Yue Yang who is just outside of B point. But I feel pretty good about this position. Eventually, I will work myself over to the Yue Yang it is a smoke Yuyang, so if I were to go directly towards him, he would probably smoke out, force me to waste more time. Whereas my team is being very aggressive at C-Point. By keeping these targets spotted, it really helps them farm damage. That's one of the most important functions of the carrier. And it will be one of the most important functions of the carrier in clan battles. But once the North Carolina was defeated... I felt like this was a good go-ahead to work on the Iowa. You really want to minimize the targets that are grouped up. You do not want to go after those guys because 
every attack against a target that has good defense, good grouping, is going to incur a lot of losses, one squadron, if not two. So I'm trying my best to get a little bit of extra damage on the aisle without losing too many aircraft. We're already losing, what, three, four? But I do get that second fire, noticing that he is not using fire prevention, and this should set up a good play. Now, the Yuyang came over to the Iowa, maybe to help smoke out, maybe to assist with his AA. Ha! <laughs> uh, that's a good joke right there. But he is clearly in the same position as the Iowa. I am going to try and scramble a dive bomb. Now, the dive bomb, I don't necessarily know that I'm going to use it against the Iowa or the Yuyang or the Des Moines. I just needed another squadron that was at full life, and oh, this Wooster takes one, two torpedoes. I really wish I could spot the torpedoes for him, but, you know, aircraft can't do that. And nobody seemingly is capturing C point. I was kind of confused by the gearing's lack of initiative to go towards C. I understand that there is a Des Moines and a Hipper on the other side of that island that could maybe reach somewhat into C point for radar, but we need to take advantage of what we have, and we have clear control over C. But I did feel it necessary to sail near the gearing, maybe uh, provide some assistance with air, but when I got over here, I realized he had smoke, he's not gonna die immediately. Instead, I chose to put a fighter in a position that could detect the Des Moines and the Hipper once again. It's always hilarious to watch a ship who planned on being able to camp freely, and oh, we don't want to get anywhere close to this Minotaur. That Minotaur is a no-fly zone. You will lose every single fighter trying to attack the Minotaur head-on. But I do like the Soyuz being spotted. The Kremlin is able to knock out the enemy Des Moines in a big shot. I think we spotted, what, 20,000 damage right there? That's awesome for our team. The Hipper is the only one on the flank with the Yu Yang. I'm trying to keep the Soyuz spotted. He does scramble a fighter, and that is the cue to not continue forward. Instead, we're going to go pick on another isolated target, the Hipper. And, of course, as I'm moving towards the Hipper, the Minotaur's path brings it directly in line to do a little bit of damage to one of my fighters. And... It's unfortunate that we do take that damage, but the Hipper is still spotted. My team can do, you know, very easy damage. Still haven't captured C point. Still haven't captured it. It could be the difference between winning and losing. And oh, we fly over the Uyan. I'm gonna use my fighter, of course. It lines up perfectly with a parallel Hipper. No big deal here, right? We're just gonna avoid all of the flak as best as we can. He tries to call in a fighter, but uh, it's too late for you, Hipper. And you want to make sure you drop at the forward position of the guns, or if he's, you know, going in reverse, the rear. Wherever the momentum is carrying, if you lead him in the gun position, the drop height and the gravity itself, the time it takes to drop on the target, it should allow for the superstructure to move into the area. But we're able to take out the target without taking any fighter damage. The Minotaur is trying to move from A point to B point. There is a Yu Yang that looks to be moving towards the center. He has used smoke though, and I would love, I would love to see him in smoke and kill him, but that's just not in the cards. And honestly, if I get any closer, the Minotaur is probably going to go after me. And oh, interesting, someone is capturing B point. Now it could be the Yu Yang, or it could be the Minotaur. Now the Yu Yang recently uses smoke. He does not have it available. And I don't really know what type of Minotaur this is. So this is a blind attack and oh yep, it's the Minotaur. And his AA is already doing work. Easily would have lost the first squadron. We almost lost an aircraft just by flying away. Incredibly dangerous. But what I would love for him to do is to try and fire his guns. The second he fires his guns, his AA detection is going to bloom out and he's going to be stuck being spotted. He doesn't really make that mistake though. He seemingly is holding on and I'm trying another attack path. I'm really trying to focus this guy down with a teammate. Someone gets a good AP shot. Conveniently, the Minotaur smokes out himself and it blocks the Yu Yang from spotting. 
I'm able to get basically out of the effective AA range of the Minotaur without taking any damage. And that's all due to the smoke. And notice, once again, we place a fighter in a position that can keep a target spotted who is camping behind an island firing his guns. It's one of the best ways to force him out of that position. Now, I could try a head-on attack. That ain't gonna work. The Wooster is just as devastating, if not more devastating, with defensive fire compared to the Minotaur. You will just lose the whole squadron, and I can't really afford to lose the whole squadron. Now, some of you might be going, Nazi, you've had a lot of low impact in this game. It's nine minutes left, and you have only done 30,000 damage, but I've spotted 143,000 damage already. The early game is the weakest for the carrier. They just don't have the spacing of the enemy to alleviate all of those AA concerns. You just can't attack that into a minnow, into a wooster, into a double battleship without sustaining tons of losses. I mean, this AA is legit, but there's enough people taken out and there's enough vulnerability that I feel lucky about going at this guy. Now I'm trying to angle so I'm on the outside so that at least his priority sector is not wiping me out, but his defensive AA, it is so effective. It's, it's scary how effective defensive fire is in this new system. And I just instantly recall, I know I'm gonna lose them all. I know there's no way I'm getting out. Just cut my losses and move on. There is a possible minnow in the center and we did catch sight of the minnow firing his guns, which is awesome. Now he is basically having to be held straight the friendly Zhao hits Torps, knocks him out. That was just a case of too much stuff having to be dealt with for the Minnow. There, there was aircraft overhead, torpedoes in the water, AP salvos incoming. That's the best way I have found to deal with the super powerful AA systems. You need to try and overwhelm them with the incoming actions. Whether it's dodging, AA priority sector, smoking, keeping track of potential torpedoes in the water. If you can overwhelm them, it's more likely that they will make a mistake. Now my team is moving forward towards B. We finally have a potential attack strategy, and we also are capturing A point. So this is seemingly going very well. The GK is out in the open. We did lose the friendly Kremlin and I'm trying to assist as much as I can against the GK. But boy, is the flak just being incredibly unfortunate. It's being placed perfectly in front of me. We do get a good torpedo attack. All, literally all six torpedoes hit. But of course, there's no flood. And of course, my teammates unable to capture because they are being camped with the Wooster firing from behind the island. So I'm going to try and get over there. Go against the Yui Yang. Maybe spot the Wooster with a fighter. And at this point, I'm like, oh, I don't have any more fighter consumables. But perhaps the Yui Yang will openly fire. I was hoping he would. Uh, of course, he times it perfectly. There's no way he would have known that I was there. But it just worked out that he held his fire just in the nick of time so that I couldn't get a good lead. And he returned fire after I was already too committed. What we're going after against the Wooster. And we do 10,000 damage with the attack rockets. They are very valuable, but they are so vulnerable. And I'm just desperate, desperately trying to keep my squadron alive. Because we are down, we are behind, but we do have two bases to the enemy's one. I would love to try and scramble once again against the Yui Yang, but it's just not gonna happen until his smoke's gone. We did lose the friendly who tried to capture A, but, we, but the two base advantage is in our favor. This enemy Soyuz, he's pretty isolated. He doesn't have good AA protection. He's a good target. The GK is a good target, but the GK is so far away from anything of note, and yep, the Soyuz, he scrambles his fighter in response to my incoming attack. I don't really care. And, ooh, the Yuva Yang. Okay, we can use this. Drop at the forward position of the guns. Did 7,300. The fighter is going to kill four of my aircraft. Maybe five. And then I should be able to re-engage something. 
The enemy aircraft carrier dropped a fighter, a friendly fighter, to try and prevent me from attacking the Soyuz, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just make you waste that. And uh, flying over the Wooster, it's like aircraft shot down, aircraft shot down, aircraft shot down. Uh, by getting in this position, I'm hoping that the bombs will drop. Eh, kind of mediocre drop. But the team was able to finish off the enemy Soyuz. Now our friendly Soyuz, he's going to be dead. But we have that two base, right? We have that two base. If I can convert maybe another kill on the Yuyang or the Wooster, it would be a win. And I certainly want to prevent the Wooster from freely farming, but we did catch sight of the Yuyang for half a second. And he is isolated, so I want to go after him. He shouldn't have smoke. He's already used pretty much every charge. And this should be an easy attack, keeping him spotted for my team. Which, unfortunately, none of them are in position. Note the North Carolina on my team. He's full life, and he is hanging out by my ship. Completely useless in that position, by the way. But we're going to try and work through this guy. The enemy does drop a fighter to provide cover. Oh, we did knock out one of his torpedoes, which is good. But I'm not going to I'm not going to waste time trying to go at something that has something like a fighter as a defense. This is a great counter to someone who is using their fighters defensively. Don't give them any reward for that use. So, I scramble my torpedoes. I would love to pick on the Yue Yang. I don't think that the torpedoes are really going to do what I need them to do. But I can drop a fighter over his position. I can keep him spotted, hopefully, for the Zhao to fire on him. I've, And the Zhao does hit him. Great play by the Zhao. The Zhao ends up playing very, very well. Could not have won this without the Zhao. But we get another kill. We've got two bases to the enemy's one. Enemy Wooster is pretty low. Haku, full life. The Wooster... There's a fighter, there's defensive AA, watch as it just melts everything. It just, it's so impressive how quick you lose everything against something like a super powerful AA light cruiser right now in 8.5, 8.5.1. It's really just a no-fly zone. You just let them do their thing and you retreat. The Zhao is doing a good job. He's retreating back to his teammates who are, you know, in the back, in a safe position. I'm certainly in a safe position. I can provide AA cover, and I'm just trying to stall the enemy team. The only way the enemy team can win this game is if they move forward. You know? The enemy Wooster does have the AA capable of dealing with me, but if I can keep him spotted, he's going to be less successful. So I try and approach from around the island. Ends up working out pretty well, where we get... Fairly close. The enemy did put a fighter, but I am just trying to catch him on the side and we get 7,700. It's not enough to kill him. And I don't know that I'll be able to rotate around fast enough before his AA takes me out. We're trying. We're de desperately trying. Desperately trying. I missed the position slightly and only one rocket lands on the target. We've got 50 seconds or so though. This is pretty much a win, and it's only a win because of the different players working so well together. Me, the Zhao, and a couple of the Kremlin leading the pack on the east side, keeping those guys spotted, not allowing the camping position to be rewarded, and ah, uh, GK immediately uses his fighter when he sees an attack on approach. Normally, I would just say, fine. Deal with not having any use of that, but in this instance, it's pretty much a win. I'm just farming damage at this point, and I'm just trying to stay alive for my team. The North Carolina, he's too healthy because he hasn't been engaged that long. He's not going to die. The GK, definitely not going to die to me. There's not enough time left. But the team ends up winning the game, and it's a lot of managing different things. Keeping targets spotted, considering if using a fighter defensively or offensively. What squadron is best? Trying to find the isolated target. And then, when all of that is being considered, you still gotta hit the shots. You still gotta land. And, thankfully, collectively, we got a good game out of both sides. Both sides fought really hard for this. It went back and forth to the bitter end. And we were just lucky, fortunate, that we came out on top. 
I wish I would have done a little bit better on a certain number of attacks, but honestly, I was starved for aircraft near the end anyway. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent and the most relevant uploads. You can choose to subscribe to my channel. We do daily World Warship videos, first impressions, how to news related review. My North American recruiter invite is on the screen. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you. Have a wonderful day and I'll catch you next time.